I'm doing it right now. Oh, and we are live. I must hit the live button. Welcome to Indie WebCamp New Haven session on building our first websites, where we're going to talk about how we onboard people to the web, strategize around that as we work through a live example with somebody as now. So I'm going to go and change our, add the Etherpad links, or add the links here. And session links for onboarding. Here's the Hangout link. And then I'll get the video link and put that on the wiki too. There's the, let's grab the U page. There we go. And put that here. And we will hit save. All right. OK, so we are on the wiki and live. Um, so that is live. So I am sitting here with uh, you are? Francette Carson. Francette Carson. And so what brings you to Indie Web Camp uh, New Haven today? Um, well, I'm interested in starting a website. I just wrote a book. Um, it's a historical fiction loosely based on my great-grandmother's life. Um, I'm working with an editor out of New York, um, and he explained to me that I have to have a uh, website, I have to have a social media presence, um, or the agents and publishers won't even look at my book. So oh. I have very little experience with the computer. I just started a blog a couple of years ago. It really didn't work out. Um, and I really want to have a professional site, a really nice, clean, um, professional site that's to the point. Um, I am aware that I need to um, uh, build traffic. Um, so I need to have a little more than just uh, my bio and an excerpt from my book. Um, I do uh, theater reviews, and I do that on a bi-weekly basis. Um, so I wanted to be able to, I do theater reviews for a local newspaper in my area, and I wanted to be able to add the theater reviews on my page, um, as well as um, I read a lot as well. We do, oh, and we have a whole thing, you're going to have a whole book review, read post, and we'll show you this thing. Yeah, so we do book reviews, theater reviews. I think we're going to have a lot of tools for you that we can work on today. And so, you know, my focus is on the African American culture. So um, they have a lot of book festivals and things of that nature. So I'm thinking maybe an if, right, if I have an events paid, so that'll make people come, I can tweet and do all that stuff, and that'll make them drive traffic to my page mm -hmm. because I'm also giving them information as well as reviews. So we have somebody who's looking for how do I do book reads? How do I do events? How do I, you know, and how do I publish a uh, blog? So I, I, I think pretty much a, a good indie web solution um, because we have we have pretty much tools and plumbing to do all of this. Um, so a little, uh, let's go around the room and just introduce everybody in the session quickly I, um, because we got cut off. We lost the uh, feed for when you two did your site demos. So uh, Jack, if you could just tell us about your name again and where you're from. Uh, sure, yeah. So, uh, my name's Jack Jamison. I'm a uh, PhD candidate at the University of Toronto. Um, and I'm doing my research about uh, basically values and web development. So building, uh, you know, web systems that reflect, you know, my values, which I think are probably our values. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is what brings me to IndieWeb, because I think we're interested in many of the same things. Sure. Um, I'm actually interested in this session because I've I've sort of started feeling like my site just doesn't do uh, what I want it to do, um, so I'm uh, kind of in a place where I'm happy to sort of go back to the drawing board and uh, think through. I have I'm really happy with the back end of the you know sort of the indie web toolbox that's there, but not really what I'm actually doing with it on the front. So uh, I'm. Uh, hoping I can take this session as an opportunity to sort of think through some ideas and maybe think through a new structure. And uh, for example, you know, Jack and I are currently writing a book together. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, and that, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> this, now you're talking about an author page and we have a book session together, we're probably gonna eventually need to get our own uh, website for our book um, because we have a kind of, a, well, it was due to publish about a year ago, <laughs> but um, that, that's how I roll. Uh, but Jack and I are trying to finish that up in the next couple of days. And Jack, um, I took out, some, I did a lot of work on the assessment chapter. So 
I'll share that with you later during the uh, book session. But, Great. Um, yeah. All right. And I'm just I'm just kind of getting our page kind of fixed up. Um, it's here. No attendees. Um, so Chris, do you want to just we we really didn't hear your talk. It got cut off. So can you just introduce yourself to us, please? Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, so now, my name is Chris, um, and I live online at bafosako.com. Um, entertainingly, I've spent more than 20 years in the entertainment industry uh, with large chunks of that uh, selling the book and underlying intellectual property rights to film and television production. Um, but I've also done book rights to publishing and I also a few years ago because it's so easy now or at least easy for me having had the experience I had I set up my own little publishing company um, so I have my own imprint under which I can release books and I have large blocks of ISBN numbers um, to make doing that a little easier um, so I both help uh, authors publish, but also help them build, you know, indie web related author publishing or author platforms for doing PR and publicity as well. So, yeah. you know, I, I've been doing this for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. and now in terms of personal sites, what I've started, and I don't know if you guys can see this is what, what I always do with my students is I usually give them four pages and they're only allowed four pages. Um, and you can, and then I give them graph paper and we literally start to draw them out. So for example, Francis has her header up there. She wants her name and then looking for these pages and about me, a book or book, um, a theater events and how to connect to her, well, either through social media or co how to contact through social media and those accounts. So, so what we're doing now is kind of just laying out her pages. Um, Chris, would you think that there's anything else that, what did you call it? We're building an author platform? An, uh, yeah, if you Google the phrase author platform, there are a million articles about how to do it, what should be on it, kind of how you should lay it out. So that'll give you at least, they'll give you the business reasons for why you should do it and kind of how you should do it. Um, well, I guess the actual execution is something we can tinker at today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the nice part is there's, to my knowledge, nobody in that space, in the publishing space, besides me and maybe one or two others who are active in the indie web are kind of using, or people like, you know, William Hartling are using an indie website to create an author platform so that, and I, the example I give is I published a book for somebody who was in their late seventies, a couple years back. And he had no digital platform footprint at all, nothing, except for maybe a, uh, I think he had a Gmail account with about 50 email addresses of people he communicated with. They had no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, no Google Plus, nothing, uh, not even a website. So I built him a website that did all the indie web things, but it, the nice part was he could publish in one spot send all his content out to all those social media sites and then all the interactions he was getting in those places came back to his own website so he could just publish one place and kind of be done but still interact with a broader book buying public to promote his book so um the nice part is you don't have to most authors i think kill themselves building author platforms and then they're posting on their site and then they're copying and pasting that in 15 other places. And then they spend half of their day following and watching all those other spaces and then their own websites, just one more place. And then, then you don't have time to write your books anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. As what is Chris, you noticed that in your process that you kind of, how do you get, get you said you don't, plan out you just kind of start coding how what's your problem well the, the the difference too is i've built you know seventy eight thousand websites in my life and for the majority of the time they're all going to have a, the same types of things a header you know a main body section a footer a sidebar a menu so it's you know most of those things or you'll have a you know the traditional about me page 
the contact me page types of things. Oh, because you have so, templates built. So to usually with you know most of the templates or even themes that are out there, especially if you're building in WordPress, it becomes a little easier to you know, spin up a site and start filling in the bits of data that you know you're going to need or that you're te technically going to want. So, you know, the hardest part usually is do I name my about me page about or about me or, you know, something else. And, and Jack, you talked about wanting, what is it about your page that you want to change? I think uh, I had uh, sort of just taken sort of this stock layout of, um, you know, having my uh, front page be a blog. And part of the problem is I don't blog that often. Uh, so I have this feed that has a bunch of sort of disconnected notes or replies to people or likes, but they're not very well organized, which so is a confusing first impression. And what I actually want to do is make a site that would be useful for like, when I'm applying for jobs at universities, uh, have an overview of the projects I've worked on, um, and probably what I'll do is have an overview of sort of each project and then attach to each project, maybe pull in all the posts I've cool. made related to. Are you And are you going to go with a static landing page, though? And I'm thinking uh, probably stick with uh, yeah, a static uh, about me page or. But you'll still, your, your, your main address yeah. will be just your feed, I'm saying, not a static home page. I, right, yeah. I'm thinking either a static home page or mm -hmm. the other option is doing something like. Uh, like Aaron Parecki has a nice layout on his site where on the home page it has his bio, then his posts below that. So his posts are all there, but uh, contextualized with a bit of an introduction. I'm going to show you my old site. Um, now, some of, the, some of the pages aren't going, and I'm going to show frame set. So what I did is, hold on, let me go back to find my share my screen here. Share application window. There we go. Not entire screen, just the application window. All right, and then you don't get the thing. Yeah, so Jack, Jack, that's kind of what I did. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, you know, I have I have more links at top than you would probably have, just because I do it for more more things. Right. But then I have my I had a brief bio, links yeah. to all of my different post types. But then I actually did only my articles on my um, on my page, and then down here, this is like you could separate this by project. I separated by um, by class. So here's post for 307. Oh, nice, yeah. 305. So those could be, you know, my pro and you could separate that in any way, shape, or form. So that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that's a lot closer than what I'm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if it helps, Jack, I I found on GitHub somebody had conglomerated a list of profile page, uh, not profile, but um, portfolio pages. Mm -hmm. So it was. And I think most of the examples were probably developers who built particular projects or apps and then had typically like a one page sheet of here's all the things I've built and a little bit about each one of them. Um, but there were probably 50 sites that you can click on and see examples. So if you go to the uh, profile um, page on the wiki, it's probably the dead last link on the page that I added literally a week ago. Um, but that's a pretty common design element. And it helps to have examples of what other people have done. And then you can find the best one that may work for your situation and kind of because you go deal with that. Go with that and not have to re redevelop everything. And yeah. Some developers end up with multiple portfolios because they're like, well, check my GitHub profile. Or if they're developing, they're like, um, you know, go to Gumroad or go to like all of, I forget the new one that designers are using right now that's, you know, big this minute. Um, but nobody, it's like the the portfolio platform for every industry, whether it's authors in Goodreads or developers mm -hmm. in, or artists in DeviantArt, it's always shifting. And the only way I think to really, if you want to have a portfolio is to have your own website because then you can move to the shifting portfolios. Like we have enough evidence that, Wherever yeah. portfolios go is going to change. So don't try to just build there, right? Um, in my opinion. So I think that's a good idea. So what we're going to do, what um, so I think I'm looking at the, hold on, I have so many link pages open. Um, I'm looking back for the Ethan pad. Give me one second. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a quick few minutes to talk with um, Francette and you and uh, Chris can do the same. I mean, we'll be over talking each other, but 
um, taking the opportunity to just kind of lay out those pages, because I'm not going to have her get started on building the WordPress site today. Um, we'll lay those at her pages out today, and then during Hack Day tomorrow, launch the website. Because did, we, did yeah. we create a hashtag for or an Etherpad for this session? Yeah, I have the Etherpad. It's um, uh, I'm in it. Hold on one second. It's um, it's we're using the same one called onboarding. It's a slash onboarding. We're building off of the old. Okay. Stuff. All right. Um, I'll post All it right. in the chat. I figured I should be taking better notes here, but I have been for you. Okay, I think I've got it here. So, what is your purpose? So, that's your first thing. What makes you want you're trying to make in authors? On your board. If you had to describe yourself in six words, what would they be? Um, thinker. Thinker. Adventurous. Adventurous. Very honest. To a fall. Oh, to a fall? No. That's good, though. As an author? And so, if you want to do the same right now, Jack, is what would that home page look like? If you're, because you're, what do you want your landing page to be? And then you can design your portfolio page. Just mm -hmm. using boxes and stick figures. Don't go crazy. <laughs> you have to be an artist, but you know where you want stuff to go, and then we can move around the, the stuff to make it go in that spot. Um, oh, yeah, I said honest. Historian? Um, yeah, not this I mean, that's a good tagline. Thinker, adventurous, honest, historian, writer, theater, what do you, actor, actress? You know? I love theater. Because I analyze everything. I can directly do something with psychology and social. 25 years. So, so I analyze everything. Theater buffs, so, uh, thinker, adventurous, honest, historical theater buff. And I think so we have, you have your, you want to have an about me page. And then each book, your book will be its own page, right? Or you may have like a top level books. If you have multiple books, you'd have a. I was thinking about that. She's one. So would you make it <laughs> but if you've got one book, then put the, you know, put that in your kind of menu header and have a page specifically for each book. Yeah. So what's your name? Is typical. Muddy Waters of the South. Muddy Waters of the South. Is it, it's not literally about Muddy Waters, though, is it? No, no. That's you know, your your note. Some editor is going to be change that title real quick. You don't get choice of your title as an author. To I make. heard about that. Yeah. And literally, people would look at that book and think, "Oh, it's about Muddy Waters." And it'll be like, I mean, yeah. What? Oh, you're, but but that's the thing. Are you actually trying to use it as a metaphor to muddy waters? No. Oh, yeah. They're going to make you change that time. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm didn't mean to be mean. Like, that brutally honest oh, thing? Not. That was that right there. Um, so then you'll want a page for your theater reviews. You want a page for your book reviews. Well, you have, but that would be, you know, my book, book, um, book reviews. Reviews. All right, then five is connect with me. So you know you're having, and then your homepage. So we know that you only need what? I just saw something on uh -huh. one of my favorite authors' page. She had a letter from the author to dear readers. Okay, so much? no, we can instead let's instead of calling it about me, you can call it dear readers, and that, that's where you put your letter to the author. Or we can put a about me with a link to dear readers. You can do that too. This is your website to get to the side. So now that we know, so what I'm doing now. Is, dropping my microphones. Now, we know that we have, and this is where you're gonna get your homework, so this is gonna be kind of soon, because you know that you have your six pages. Is that too many pages to start? Um, we might, by tomorrow, finish half, but I'm, I work here. No, I mean, at overall. I'm no, that's a good thing. For the, for the to navigate, is that just too much? I would say that has everything that you want, 
Well, you're, and then you'll have your blog posts. But that just happens automatically, that page. So you're having a, a website with seven pages. But you could combine your book reviews and your feed reviews if you wanted to okay. um, and separate them out. But it's really not that, that extra work because really, you're not building a page. We're gonna we're gonna tell this we're we're gonna tell WordPress is if I write a read post or a book if I write a review, a book review, uh, Chris, this is where I get stuck on when do I use a review, you know, but I think we'll use a review. If you write a review, then that will just automatically go to this page. You don't have to maintain it. Okay. So you're just gonna have to build the pages. And then then if you if you writing you write a post and it's a theater review, you'll just tag it theater. And it will go right to your theater page without you changing or having to do anything. Okay. So you, this way, you the really so you only are going to have to maintain your home page, your about me page, and your book page. Those are the only ones because the blog, the book review, and the excerpts. Those hey, are those will all connect to your website automatically. So what we're going to do then is you can just start drawing out those pages. Literally, like, and you get your ruler if you want, or if you don't like rulers, but write your bio, write, like, do the copy. That's the hard part. Um, you would, like, you know how to write. We know how to code. We're going to put the two together and get you a website. But what we can't do is write front set online. So you can design, take one of these pages, so this will be your, and you can compare it and go home, and when you look at other, other people's websites, so this is your home page. The, the toughest question, too, actually, is do we have a domain to put all this on? Not yet, but we're going to go home. I'm going to cover that next and how to do domain okay. you know, that uh, part of a half hour. Because that's probably the hardest part of the whole thing is what do you want the name of your website to be? Yeah, do you want to just Francis M. Carson? Well, well, let's go, we can go right now to see if that's available. If you want to copy that in the notes, the choosing domain stuff. Or link to any pages we have about that. Yeah. Right. You want the MN though, right? Or the Frank that cards. Yeah. Yep, so you can get Frank Carson.com. So what your your shared hosting and, and you can use we recommend either Dream Host or Reclaim Hosting. I use Reclaim Hosting. Um, it's, it's cheaper, but um, it's a, and it's a good easy scaffold for people. But it will be um, the prices when you look at the shared hosting. It is thirty dollars a year, and that will be cover the cost of your domain. So if you when you come back tomorrow, you can either do this at home tonight. Um, uh, um, I might be able to do that. I don't know that. Okay. But yeah, so it'll be thirty dollars for for that, and we will go ahead and get started. So what I would like to do then is just leave you with these pages, home. I wish when I started my website, I'd run into three coders like this who. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Cool. Yeah, this is Chris. Did you hear the story too? I was literally picking up breakfast, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm running a conference on how to put up together websites." And the owner's like, "Oh, I wish I could do that. I need to go off my Facebook page." I'm yeah. Like, come on down. And they were in the <laughs> restaurant eating with her husband, and she's like, "Can I go to your conference?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> that, that's 100 how it happened. Yeah. Home, uh, book. Well, and I wish I'd known Reclaim Hosting existed when I started mine too. I've got so much infrastructure on my host now. I yeah. kind of want to. I kind of want to move just to save half the money. Um, yes. Well, you know what, Chris? If you pay them twenty five dollars, yeah, they'll do it, do all of it for me. <laughs> That's what I'm telling Tonka. He's like, "This is so hard." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I just paid twenty five dollars." Well, the problem too is I've got all my email on an email server there. That's I've been there for years, and if I move, I automatically lose it. So no, they will. They will. Um, they they will. Uh, the, moving the email is insanely stupid and hard and annoying. They but don't, how many pay for it? Well, I don't know. Um, both the other thing is, you need. It. You can also like, download your email and then yeah. I'm yeah. Actually, now that um, now that 
uh, inbox is going away from Google, I really thought about taking the opportunity to switch away from Google. Or, but I just love everything with suite, like all the apps. So I'm like, maybe I just pay the ten dollars a month and get a Google domain, and then yeah. I won't track. And then, but that's one more ten dollar a month bill. Yeah. Home book theater. Oh no, you want home book reviews? Theater reviews. All right, and then you're gonna put your dear readers page up or on your about me or. I'll call it about me, dear reader. You can decide that. So what I'm doing, Chris, is this actually, and this is something that I always do, is I rarely where students let them even touch a bit of HTML until I see their entire website laid out on paper. And yeah. then I can yeah. have a pen and be like, when I press here, it goes to this page. On that page, like, so all of the navigate, to really have yeah. them through their navigational choices. Well. Especially like, if you're starting with like a five or six page site. Yeah, and you do that all in your head automatically though. This is like, we're just trying to make the learning, yeah. you know, more explicit. Or, you know, yeah. doing it a lot. concrete. Yeah. You're, do, you're doing, you're explicitly doing the steps I do in my head. Exactly, and that's that's the same way we've always taught anyone how to read. It's yeah. like, we, we do the things we, that authors or readers do in our head, and we do them out loud for students to hear. Um, about, what's that say? Oh, that's the theater readers. Theater readers, okay. About me, uh, theater reviews, book reviews, home, oh, and then contact, and then the page for your book. And we can make that, I have a page, I have a contact. Now, this is the choice, and, and David, you can over listen. Chris, this is where I sometimes they'll recommend Sempress over um, 2016, not for any other reason, except one's available on WordPress and gets automatic updates. Mm. When you have to know how to get to GitHub, make a child theme and push updates from GitHub. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a it's a little bit of a lift for people. Um, so that's the only reason I am sort of recommending Sempress over your theme, Dave. But it has nothing to do with quality. <laughs> or you could do one of the child versions of um, Sempress. What? Or the Zenpress? No, but yeah. my thing is like. I want to make it so that they never have to worry about updating a theme. Mm. Yeah. And the way to do that is the WordPress.org repository. Yeah. Yeah. And, and which then only limits you to just Simpress right now. Um, mm, I guess so. But it doesn't matter for you three because you know what you're doing. Yeah. And not in me. Um, I because I like the 2016 theme a lot. And then this your book, Muddy Waters of the South. Working title to be changed. I'm, telling you. <laughs> I'm not familiar. <laughs> Where in South Carolina were they? Uh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Not that muddy out in the mountains. Yeah, the Piedmont down in South Carolina, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or the uh, the swampy areas of uh, you know Oki Finoki down in Georgia. Yep. So these are your pages that you can lay out. So we're here tomorrow at night, and we're literally just hacking on websites all day long. You come back. By the end of the day, you're going to demo your website and say, I'm Francette, I'm my, I'm Francette Carson, and my URL is francettecarson.com, and here's my website. And you're going to be able to demo it by the end of the day. All right, so this is kind of just jot down notes, whether you draw it like this or you just take down notes of what you want on each page. Okay. If you can come back with these kind of just even random ideas tomorrow, okay, we'll be, yeah, you'll be all set to go. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for this, yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow you'll have Greg have, will have built you a ten thousand dollar website inside of two days for you know yeah. for, for, for thirty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that really it actually goes to another company that doesn't have anything to do with them. With me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got to figure out to get a piece of all these like uh, design work because I'm realizing what these like. Um, <laughs> These uh, design, I don't know what they call them, like houses or design houses, I don't know. People charge a lot nowadays. Although, I will say Wix and Weebly has kind of really crushed the independent you know, website design shop um, because people think that they can just go throw up a Wix and Weebly page and be done. And then when they yeah. go to leave Wix and realize that you can't take your website with you, they're very, very upset. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the price of website development has at very at the low end, you know, like I'm sure big agencies that like do Coca Cola, oh, yeah. like yeah, they're yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I know people, I know a lot of people who, if you aren't willing to spend $5,000, even as a base level that it's like, okay, where you can, you'd need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. But, but below that though, a lot of that website development work has just, just disappeared. Yeah. Uh, and what I've always done for getting started, I try to get people to take off on our own. So the way that I, and, and I have a full-time job, so I can't do that many. So I've always set it up as instead of some made up price of $5,000 or $4,000 and you're never like, they'll tell you 2000, but by the time the website's done, you're in for nine. Um, yeah. What I do is just do it's $250 flat a month. And I build your website and run your social media until you're ready to take over. And then I just stop collecting. Yeah. And then, um, and then well, I like, the screwy part too is even reclaim hosting quit doing um, referral links. Yeah, you know because they used to give you a you know a couple months free or ten dollars for everybody to refer or something like that, mm -hmm. and to keep their prices lower, they actually quit doing that altogether. Well, it makes sense, and I'm okay. Like I'm okay with them getting the money because they're on the same mission. Yeah, um, and I've kind of like, and like I said, I I do this. This is part of my job. Like I I work at Southern and. I study web literacy, so I'm getting more people online is like giving a kid a book. Yeah. And getting people on websites, the same job as me is giving them a book. Um, so I feel like getting paid is like getting double dipping. But that, but the one, I do trade for that organic farm. I do a lot of trading of website services too. So <laughs> I run a, a yeah carpentry website, and that's how my home gets fixed. Um, I run it for a glass blower, and I trade for organic food every month. Well, in the wintertime, it's more it's more veggies in the summer, more meat in the winter because well, yeah. you know, have you heard of the phrase? I think it's library carpentry. No, there's a a movement among librarians that a, it's essentially indie web for libraries and librarians, but it's called like library carpentry. I think is the I'd have to Google it to double check, but if you check if you look for library and carpentry, is a thing you should find links to librarians who are sharing code to help build websites and library related infrastructure well and that's what we're I, you call it you call Kim, kimberly's interest you know that's what i know for grants like i really want to root this stuff in libraries i want libraries like giving out shared space space i want you know the check out my domain project to get kids like we should get kids building websites in their library local libraries and their schools um and not just Google Sites and Weebly and Wix, but actual real, let me learn how to build a website tool. Although yeah. Weebly is not bad. I think you could, we could hack at Weebly. I, I know I can make a micro format Steam for Weebly. I just don't run on Weebly, um, so I haven't done it yet. Um, but I know a lot of church groups that are very interested in, in the web that would love it. Um, and if you can hack, it's, it's, if you can hack a WordPress theme, you can, by a million miles, yeah. you could do it by a million miles on Weebly. It's, it's just a mustache. It's super easy to do. Well, I hate saying word easy. I should stop saying that. It, someone with the abilities to work on a WordPress indie website, Francesca, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Uh, um, would be able to do that, I think, with Weebly. So those are my ideas. So, Jack, yeah. what are you thinking for your? You know, you're, you want to redesign your site? You want to? You're going to lay out a portfolio page, or what are you thinking? Yeah, so I've been, I've been, uh, I actually have uh, gone against uh, my normal team uh -huh. and gotten out some paper, uh, and I just chartered out a bit of a site map. Um, so like homepage will just be a bit of a bio. Uh, I want to add a list of projects that I'm working on, um, which will be like my dissertation and the open pedagogy book and some other stuff that I've worked on. Uh, I have a list of my publications on my site now, which is functional, but I think I could lay it out mm -hmm. uh, a little nicer. Um, and feel free to copy the um, on my on my CV. Mm -hmm. um, I the uh, if you write an APA, I don't know your, what you guys use, but the, yeah, uh, the APA. You correct APA and correct microformats on my data page. Um, so you can copy and paste that. Yeah, that's um, trying to get Steven down to come because he and I have been supposedly supposed to finish mapping out all of the APA format files into microformats um, because you have to like you can't rely on the um, bib tech or any of the database records. They're all you have to use manual 
input to get it correct because it's gar it's gar like they they're missing so much data. So the two of he and I have been working on a, a plan to to map all of them so that we can then build a you know a simple entry form that you know guestbook form that I'm gonna work on this weekend could be very similar. Is I want to enter in a new a new uh, a new publication and building in the the indie web form to or building in a form so that outputs the correct HTML. Right. Like it's 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 a bunch of us have been working on that for so long. It's just so yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. I guess essentially it's like a post right? So many rules to follow. Is it six or under authors? Then you have to be able to add author. Does the author yeah. have a website? If the author has a website, you need the, you know, the H card to to be a link. Little little rules that we've been trying to map out. And we have a, a pretty good repo that I'll share with you, but not for your project. Um, yeah, I think that's a good start for you. If you want something that works pretty, it's, and it's probably the slickest WordPress plugin I've ever seen in my entire life, mm -hmm. but there's a plugin called the Academic Bloggers Toolkit. Oh, I've heard of this, but not used it. That if you're doing citations or references or even building your own reference, it will allow you to dump in a URL of, you know, journal article pages, and it will automatically parse the page, suck in all the data, or most of the data, depending on how it's marked up. But it generally does a pretty solid job um, for most of these sites. So it'll give you the author name, the title, when it was published, where, and it lets you choose from eight million you know, citation styles um, so that you can choose one and it'll output that. And then it gives you options of, you know, do you want it to auto link to the page or not or things like that. And then what it does, and it's, it's one of the few that's not built on uh, short codes. There's a lot of them out there that use short codes and the problem is as soon as somebody quits supporting that, then suddenly you have all these dead short codes on your side, or if you decide I'm gonna walk away from it. So this guy built it and it's a humongous amount of JavaScript, I think is how he's doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And the nice part too is even in the in the in in your sidebar and the meta bar, and I usually keep it pinned at the top, you can actually unpin the meta box and the meta box will move with you as you scroll down the page. So that as you're going from the top of your, you know, if you're writing a big long article, It'll scroll with you so that you already always have that little reference oh, box yeah. right there to add, and it will let you kind of build a reference list even if you don't reference it in an article. And then when you need to, you put your cursor where you want to, and then hit enter, and it, it puts the thing in there. But the nice part is, it puts all the reference stuff in there and does it in raw HTML. So if you only need to use this to do three references, you put the plug in, you activate it, you use the three references, it puts all the HTML in, and then you can totally unactivate it and walk away from it. And you have all the raw HTML for your references in, in your post. Um, but if you're doing a lot of referencing, it's yeah. super awesome and it lets you modify most of the details manually if it doesn't pull up, pull in specific pieces or or things that you want so it's i did a bunch of research a year ago to find um and the guy yeah literally he's really i think he's working it's his like it's a thing he's working on on a phd on the side it's his you know procrastination project but literally he updates this thing or hacks on it, or works on code, or fixes bugs every other day of the week. Wow, you know. But it's one of the slickest WordPress plugins I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Cool. I will try that. Yeah, and that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can pull up. A... Yeah, I added the link to the um, like you the, got it already. Yeah, yeah okay. the Etherpad already. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so I'm actually looking at that. That's actually really cool. Um, all right, so we have about 10 minutes left of brand sets left. So what do you guys think, like, just in brainstorming in general, as, um, what do you think that we have somebody new showing up to an indie web event never had a website? Is there anything that we could do as an 
as a community to improve our onboarding to people who have never had a website before? What do you think? What do you think that we can do um, to improve on, or do we need to improve our onboarding? Is it is it okay? Is this is this system just kind of what do you know? Like that was a, how do we help out people who have been here for the first time? Or is that even our target audience? Yeah, well, it's slowly going to become that target audience for, you know, f what we would typically have called the third and fourth generations, but which we haven't come up with a new mm. vocabulary of what to call and when and where and why to call them. Um, but, you know, and it depends on the person too. So somebody like that who wants a, a specific type of website as an author platform, you know, they're almost assuredly not going to be, I, I don't, I don't think she would be serviced well by micro dot blog yet. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close. There's, you know, some tinkering around, but somebody like that, I think it's probably easier to start off with a, a WordPress site or, you know, even known maybe. And well, the, idea, the other question is how do you how do you help set them up with something and let them walk away? And that's what I feel like I can set them up with WordPress. Yeah, I feel like I can I can set them up with WordPress and walk away and know that it's supported versus with the way that you install known right now, I don't think I could work with Francet to be like, all right, well now you need to we're going to install it. You're going to build your MI, your MySQL database, but now we're going to go install Composer, and now we're going to go to GitHub and download the source code. Yeah. I, I can't do that yet. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I'm leaning towards, yeah, I would like the the page building in microblogs close, but it, it's really, it doesn't feel like, I think, to a new person that it's about a web page yet. It's it, it really, you know, like, yeah, it's a microblogging community that allows you to build web pages. Not a web page that you can also build microblogging into. Yeah. And I feel like WordPress is a web page where you build your microblogging into, and microblog. Well, it's actually in the title of the microblog. I mean, it's, yeah. like, it's a, I mean, like, the pages well, are an additional feature. And it's impressive to see how far microblogs come with. I just love one, it. one or two developers in two years. Yeah, and you really can like the pages you can build there are awesome. Um, I would have moved my students there, except for the five dollar a month. By I mean, they're just too precarious at, at where they live economically yeah. that their credit card might get turned off, and then I yeah. lose the work for the semester. So I, I just can't do a monthly yeah. fee. Otherwise, I would have. I would have probably tried that for the for yeah. the for my OER communities. This is working out so well, and I already have like three. I want to start, but I don't have any more money to give. Um, but I did uh, two hundred dollars. That's a hundred dollar a year hosting through Reclaim. But I did it for two years for sustainability. And each club then gets they get a domain where I put a, a, a media wiki install for a knowledge base. I throw up um, Riot FM, which is a matrix client uh, for a chat room on a different subdomain, and then everybody in the network gets a known site on a subdomain. And it works so well. Actually, I, I just saw a tweet. The, um, the Global Open Initiative Foundation, they have a bunch of representatives from the Ghana government that are out there checking. Oh, no, DW News. So they have, it was, I'm not wrong. Um, they have, they're meeting with a bunch of journalists now that are learning about our project. And this project's like a week old. Um, so, and Cameroon is already looking to start. Uh, Medellin wants to start one up. Um, Ken Bauer pretty much did it on his own in uh, Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, I, for groups, I might continue with that route, like, because it, it it makes a little bit more of a, a community to do it that way, because they don't need a network. The, and I know that Gnome's going to have the social reader soon, and Jack is working on a dissertation. Um, unless he does his dissertation on yarns, that's going to take priority. Yeah. dissertation is on yarns. What is it? I, I just ran across it the other day, but I noticed that Reclaim has a website called state with the letter U dot org as a kind of a sample university hmm. uh, domain of one's own platform. And apparently you can go in and register for a sample domain that they keep live for 30 days. 
but essentially gives you access to all as if you had bought a reclaim hosting account Ooh, and I didn't know that. I will use the that. dashboard and the installatron and the whole nine yards um wow but it's you know when you can kind of say go in if you could go in as an individual or a teacher and say hey i want to build something for a class for you know host something for a couple hundred bucks and then put all that all that stuff on there and at least give your students access to it something they could keep on your a generic domain name but then export and re-import all their stuff to their own later if they wanted would be yeah, that's the thing for that for that hundred dollars mm -hmm. they're getting the 10 gigabytes so they can do whatever they want like if they want to go back and install um drupal or joomla or any of the thousand other tools that come in installatron uh through reclaim they can um so you know i think it'll be a it's a good way to kind of start people off chris i wonder if we can ever get like that what would be like the indie web version installatron because that is yeah. that that's one of the things I've been mm -hmm. thinking about lately too. Is their Reclaim has a pretty good setup so that you can say, "Hey, I want a WordPress site," and it'll do kind of a one-button install and give you some basics. Um, but they've also gone in and added some of Alan's Splot stuff, so you can say, "I want kind of a one-page business card website," and it'll mm -hmm. automatically install it and set it up with at least some of your data in a one click install and give you a one page website that then you can go add the few other bits and pieces. But I, I think, think it would be kind of cool if we could talk them into doing a setup that creates an indie website, an, an indie web website that has most of the basic plugins already set up and kind of pre-configured in at least a general setting. Mm -hmm. And then they can see, you can say, I want an indie website, click a button, automatic install. And then all you have to do is go in and add your own data. Um, huh. And, they do and it give you one of, you know, one or two different themes, maybe kind of pre-installed that will just work out of the box. So you don't have to worry about it. And then if you want to tinker around with other themes, you can. Um, yeah. And I talked yeah. to them. I talked to them about because I was like, "Can you guys update 09? Like, because they have the known installs at 092. Like, can you guys update 09? And they said, "Actually, keeping packages up to date in Sorolton is a is not an easy task." You yeah, know, it's not. Oh, I, I bet, yeah. I just installed uh, Wallabag the other day, and it's like eight versions behind. Um, and it's like, eh, okay, this is fine, but it doesn't. Yeah. The problem is that I've got an install, but the mobile client doesn't work at all because it doesn't. It's a version before the mobile client existed. So it's like, okay, this is, it, it's useful and it's worthwhile for me on desktop, but half of the stuff I read and want to bookmark to it um, is on mobile. And it's it's just such a pain in the neck. It's like, oh. Well, that's, that's right. Thank gosh for, well, actually, my known site just works. So I don't know if it's technically a progressive web app. I just save it to my home screen and just works as one. So I use the uh, Android chair buttons to, to bookmark mobile now yeah i do find it slightly much more difficult it does take a couple clicks because sometimes if like say something shows up a nuzzle i do have to click like open in chrome, chrome yeah so you don't get the show weird yeah. yeah but that's you know that's developers and, and android and you know silos a silos gonna silo um that would be awesome wow one press button or, and i wonder like could we do it ourselves too or just i don't know i mean you do need the shared hosting but or some kind of, yeah, because it could have, it could launch. What's your theme called now, Dave? Your main one. Uh, so, yeah, IW, so it could take IW26 or SEMPRESS or Microblog, but mm -hmm. you'd have to have a, a resell kind of thing, but that's, you know, a business conversation between the two of them. I guess Microblog already has shared hosting or like a known site. It'd be like the four buttons, you know, it works. Alan uses that dimensions theme to sign into the wiki. Because it allows for the XFN field in the customizer, yeah. so all he does is go into customizer and add rel equals me, and that's how that's what he uses to get into the wiki. I haven't tried it yet, um, and I knew it existed, and it may actually work to do it. But there's a plugin called All in One WP Migration that I think will allow you to, and it's mostly built for migrating sites from one host to another. So you could download all of your site, 
back it up, move hosts, and then create a blank WordPress install and then suck all the data back in. But I have a feeling that same setup could be used to roll up a package of indie of an indie web WordPress site with nothing in it. Yeah. That you could then create a file that we can host either on the wiki or GitHub or somewhere that you can download that install file. And then on a host, you do a one click install, install that plugin and activate it, import all that data and then go from there. And then you have a fully set up, ready to go indie web website in maybe one click for the install a couple of clicks for the plugin and then another you know maybe five clicks and then you're ready to go and and for the most part or at least all the setup is done uh-huh so That's instead good. of spending two hours you could do a in fact most wordpress installs on hosts now are it's a you know 10 second install rather than even a five minute install so you could have an indie web website up in five minutes or less all right well that's our hour um we're going to break lunch. Uh, we'll be back at one o'clock for the session on books um so we'll see you guys in an hour thanks everybody. Good. all right see you in an hour